So welcome everybody. Welcome to Hot Song Podcast. The topic for this evening is the real I revisited. Today is October the 24th, 2024. So I've talked about the real I, I think maybe around June, July time frame. And I kind of mentioned it a little bit last week. However, um, this week I feel inspired to just go into like a, a full-blown review. Last time was just mini review. So this time I actually want to do um, like more of a real review. And of course, is to, to explain um, why, why, why revisiting the real eye? Because the real eye is really um, working with the soul. So it's like we've learned a lot of different healing methods. However, it is still um, just working with more mental stuff. Whereas when we get into the real eye, and there is the real eye, like um, we have many eyes. We have, well, well, besides our physical eyes, we have the third eye, the real eye, the wisdom eye, fourth eye, fifth, sixth, seventh. So there are quite a number of eyes. And um, however, the real eye is actually the, um, it is kind of the door to a lot of other higher frequencies and and we'll talk about more of the other eyes um, talk more detailly about the fourth the fifth and the sixth and the seventh later on or further on in in the year or next year however um right now i really just want to go back to revisit the real eye just to refresh everyone's memory because the real eye as i mentioned is the door so it's a door that opens up to a lot of other things. If you if you really get the real eye and you really do the exercises to um, activate and strengthen your own real eye, your own real eye is really you working with your soul and getting the soul aligned with you and be one of your allies. Then you actually have kept so much more power. You you you'll be able to not just see what is physically there to see, but you'll be able to see behind because it is when we see, we actually look at energy. So um, when we see with our physical eyes, we're only looking at like surface layer of the, the what the energy is trying to say to us. But when we start to work with our real eye, we actually seeing a little deeper into it. It is like, um, layers of the onion when we first look at the onion yeah the outer is is there's a layer of skin but um when you peel one which is you get the surface information but when you start to peel back all the layers each layer actually has deeper meaning so we can look at a person and only see what their face looks like but when we activate the other eyes especially the real eye, will be actually um, communicating with the other person or anyone that we choose to. We will be able to um, kind of decipher what information they are trying to tell us because we are always broadcasting. Um, our energy is always being broadcasted. It's, it's like we have to actually do something to to kind of shield ourselves whereas most people they don't think about shielding so it is so you can actually get so much information not just what you can see but actually your real eye connected with your soul would be able to communicate with their soul as well so that's a much deeper level of of communication which is useful if you want to heal something or even if you just want to be able to understand somebody else um, at a deeper level. So these are what working with the real eye can give us. So that is the reason why I feel the real eye actually um, is worth 
putting some effort into. So after all that long with the thing, let me just start um, kind of review about the real eye. So first, first thing first, where is the real eye? What do I mean by the real eye? So we have physical eyes, which you guys can see. There are two of them right behind me and I have two pairs on my face. So that's, a, that's the uh, physical eyes. And the real eye is in between your, your physical eyes and your um, brow. So it is, it is usually the, the, the lowest point of your nose because um, when, you, <clears throat> when you kind of just um, press between your eyebrow and your real eye, there is a point on your nose that is the lowest. And that's usually around where your real eye is. It's kind of um, like in the middle of your head. So that's, that's approximately where the real eye is. It's a little bit in, within your skull, but it's around here. So just touch that. Kind of gives yourself a, a reminder of where it is. It's, it feels a little tender because it is, it is sensitive. So it feels a little tender. So don't try to just jab your finger in there. Just lightly touch that to just to note um, where it is. So that's where the real eye is. So just a little bit to talk about what's the difference between the real eye and the third eye, because we've talked about, we, we've known about the third eye for a long time. The third eye is kind of um, slightly above your brow. So in the middle, so it's around here, the third eye. The third eye, the difference between the real eye and the third eye is that the third eye is more connected to our brain, our, our mind. So when we get inflammation through our third eye, it um, it has to pass through a lot of our own, um, I would say, our own thoughts. So it's being filtered that way. So even though the third eye can get inflammation, but it's it's quite easy for us to, for our mind to distort the, the information because it has to, the, the information coming in from the third eye has to, go through and get interpreted through the brain. Whereas the real eye, because the real eye is um, connected to your soul. So it is not, a, um, it can bypass the, the more mental interference of um, whatever the information is coming in. It actually goes into your soul and your soul um, can bypass a lot of the, the, the mental programming that may distort how you interpret the information coming in. So that's the difference between the real eye and the third eye. However, because we've been using the third eye for such a long time, that's, um, it's not easy to switch over at, at first. To It's not easy to focus on the real eye. Um, and the other thing that's different between the real eye and the third eye is third eye, when the information comes in, it, it just flash in. It's not, whereas the real eye, when the information come in, you can actually, um, you know, pause, pause it, stop it. So it's not, um, the reason why you want to pause it is so that you can ask questions, um, comprehend it better, and you can look at it, look at the information. In like, And take your time to look at the information. Whereas the third eye, the information just comes in and it's gone. So um, it does not give you the flexibility of, you know, taking your time to analyze what it is that you that is coming through your, your eyes. So that's another reason why we want to work with the real eye, because when we work with the real eye, we can actually, we actually starting to work with our soul 
and um, let's see, what else should I bring about the real eye? The real eye is connected to the soul and it's connected to a few other points. So one of the point is the zero point. So where is the zero point? The zero point is where your physical body, your soul and your mental and the heart um, overlaps. That's where the zero point is. It's, it's where, um, it's kind of where you get to your soul, it's attached to your body, and it also has information about you know, your 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 mental state, and also um, the information that comes in through your heart. So it's it's a very powerful point, and it pulls in a lot of universal energy as well. So physically, if you just you know follow your um, rib cage. Just follow it. So look at locate the the lowest rib that you can put your hands on, and just trace it, and then you will find that there is a a bone called the breastplate. Uh, it may not be a very technical word for it, but that's but that's the 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 bone that's in the middle that connects both sides of your ribs. So that's what that's the bone that I'm talking about. So that bone. It's about two fingers with um, above the lowest point of the, the that breastplate. So that's kind of where the, the zero point physically is. And it's a little bit within your body. So it's not, of course, not right on on the, the your skin there. It's a little bit inside your body. So that's where the zero point is. The zero point is where everything where um, it's the middle of your being. And when I say your being, I mean your physical being is just a part of you. There are other parts of you that is non-physical and um, unless you can see energy patterns, you won't be able to see it. And you is, is actually much bigger. Energetically, your energy bodies is much bigger than your physical body. And where the the mid the zero point is in the middle, where everything kind of connects together, or the the, the physical part of you and the non physical parts of you connect together. So that is a powerful point. So that zero point is um, where your the energy from your soul comes into your body. And so that's where we can access it. And the way we access it is to take in energy from the zero point and then send it up to the real eye. And the real eye would interpret that information for you. So that's what that's how those two things kind of work for it and together for you. Okay, so um so how do we actually access the, the, how do we activate the real point, access the real point? Um, how come some people can access it, come some people can get information and some cannot? It's all a, for the real eye, it's, it's really a matter of um, training, training yourself to work with yourself. So you are training your, you're finding a way to work with your soul. And the first thing to work with your soul is of course to kind of let your soul know that, okay, you're ready to work with it. And that's where um, something is, you have to activate it because your soul is always there. It's it's there to, to do things, even when you're sleeping, even when you're totally um, being preoccupied by, you know, life it is it is there and and it's and it's always trying to communicate with you however whether you are paying attention to the the clues that your soul is giving you that's a very different matter so the key to activating your soul and to working with your soul is really to quiet down 
So when you have peace in your heart and you have a quiet mind, may not have may may not need to be completely blank, but at least quiet. So the more you can um but the more you can you can have hold peace, just have a peaceful heart and a quiet mind, the easier it is for your soul energy to be activated and to come through. And one of the the, the best way to to have that to um, kind of quiet down your mind is like a bit of breathing, some meditation, and also shift into the position of being the observer. What do I mean by being the observer? We are, in our daily lives, we are always trying to act or react. We don't always, or at least myself, don't always get to observe myself. So um, we are so, we are so engrossed and so engaged in life that we like we go ahead and we are just there however when we're trying to work with the soul energy um it is much easier for us to get into a peaceful state when we kind of observe how we are being and when we take that position it is much easier for us to get a little bit detached from what's happening inside and, and around us. So when you are just observing, so you are being a, so you kind of, um, instead of being, you know, I, me and myself, you are looking, you are a, a, a third party looking at I, me and myself and observing what it is that um, goes through goes through my mind, what it is that I'm feeling, what it is that I'm thinking. So you are not just in being completely immersed in your own thinking and feeling. You're actually observing yourself doing those things. And when you observe yourself doing those things, thinking, feeling, eating, doing whatever it is that you do, when you're in the observer mode, you're a little bit, kind of a little bit detached. And that's when your mind can actually quiet down because it doesn't have to do any thinking. It doesn't have to do any calculation. It doesn't have to do any planning at all. It just needs to observe. And when you observe, then your mind um, can just calm down. So is your heart. So, so trying to be the observer is one, a very good way to put yourself into a peaceful mind and heart at a rather um, in a rather short time so when you when you um, practice ways of getting yourself into peaceful mind and a peaceful heart being the observer, then your soul energy can kind of rise up. And so does your your um, frequency as well. So um, the soul's energy is, it feels cool. It does not feel, you know, okay, I'm, I'm hot. It does not feel like that. It feels a little cool. And it feels, and there's a feeling of cool, calm, and happy. Well, happy is not in as in happy as in, you know, um, falling down laughing kind of happy. But it's just a, a state of being happy with life. So it's more like a joy rather than than happy. So that is how you know that that's a so energy. It's when you have these things, when you when you feel you are peaceful, when you feel that um, uh, you are a little bit detached, you can kind of observe yourself saying something, observe yourself 
doing something rather than being completely identified with the doer and the sayer. So, and let's, any questions about um, the real I? I, I have a question because when I activate the real I and all that, so lots of, I feel lots of energy right here on the top of my crown area. So I was, I think there was a question in the class too that the Shifu said, if you feel so much energy over here, that means there is some blockages. Okay, try, try this then. Um, How to remove that blockages? So just um, okay. So let's let's have an experience of the real eye then. Then just okay, real eye activate. So everybody, just just take a deep breath in. Let it out. Just do a few. Breathing in and breathing out. And kind of take the observer position. Just observing yourself, breathing in and breathing out. And then just slightly touch where your real eye is. And then real eye activate. Zero point activate. Gate open activate. So do you feel, what do you feel now? I, I still do feel, but the, instead of uh, fizzy, I feel like now the straight, like beams. So that, that's what I feel now because the pattern has been changed. The pattern has been changed? It has been changed, yes. Okay. Before it was like more tingling, tingly. Now I feel like uh, like kind of straight. Okay. So, so it is really um, adding in the gate open activate. Because the gate is actually, um, there is like, um, there is a point in our head, which is the gate. So when you allow the gate to open it, it actually, um let's energy in uh, or and energy go out more efficiently so maybe for you you remember to add in gate open activate mm -hmm. So far, so good? Yeah, much better. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. You're most welcome. Okay, so... Um, so I will continue on about the real... I then. So once we've activated the real I, we have the zero point activated. The so the energy from the zero point goes up to the real I. And um, so what do we do with it next? Next is when we have the real I, then 
we we can do work. We can do work by turning the um, our soul energy into an orb. So orb O R B orb. So it's like um. So the the orb is a an energy projection that we that we use um, in order to just so that we can have an interaction with it because with our soul because otherwise it's just something that is within our body we can't quite see it or interact with it whereas when we start to ask the our soul's energy to project an orb image it's it's something that we can do is ask our body to um, project that that all that all that kind of mimics what our soul looks like within the body but it is being it is creating an image that can be projected outside of us so we can start to communicate with it and start to play with it mm -hmm. um, for those who are sensitive to energy or can see energy, then you'll be able to see the orb. And when we see the orb itself, we'll be able to find out things like what color is it? Is it spinning? Is it um, like, how is it? What's what's the status of your orb, which is the status of your soul as well. So that's what we can, we can start to do is to create that projection called an orb which is really energy from the soul going through to the, the real eye. And then the real eye would be able to direct the energy outside and just create a projection of that, that orb-like energy, which represents our soul's energy. So the benefits of doing that is we, for those of us who can see energy, you actually would be able to find and look uh, um, at a lot of information that you can see within the projection of your soul. And the other thing is um, you can start to ask that orb, which is just a, a ball of, en of energy patterns. So what you can ask this to do is to turn into a whirlpool. And that whirlpool will help you to clean, to cleanse, and to clear energies that no longer serve you. Um, one of the ways that we've been using that is really to turn the orb into a whirlpool. The whirlpool is kind of just like a, a, a tornado, like a very small um, scale tornado. It is just sucking energy out and transforming that energy. And that's something that our soul can do for us. So using it as a, a tool to kind of take care of ourselves energetically, that's something that, that the, uh, the real eye and what the orb can do. Um, the orb can also, so we can use it as a, we, so several things we can use the orb for. We can create a whirlpool, which helps us in clearing energy and transforming energy. Another thing is we can actually turn it into a, um, a boat, which is useful when we want to um, help beings that are, is stuck in, in limbo to pass over. So we can, we can do that. Or we can actually ask our orb to turn into uh, a pair of sword. When you when it turns into a sword, we can actually use that to cut energy cords, um, any any energy cords that we may have formed during the day or with our family. So we can actually clean up those energy cords by cutting it and allowing it to form again, but in a new configuration. So. There's a couple of things that our, our all can do for us. So now, um, let's see, what else? 
something that I want to talk about. No, that's I think that's a pretty good review of of that. Now it's any questions so far? Because the next is we actually go and do all of that, activate the real eye, um, zero point, the orb, and then just do work. Like clearing our own energy. And um, so that kind of stuff. No questions. Okay. So far so good then. In that case, then let's... Um, that's um, may I ask yep. one question? Uh, you said to cut the, to make a sword, to cut the cords. So yep. that's like the release of emotions? Or? So the, the <clears throat> so when we, when we meet somebody, let's say we just talked. Yeah. So energetically, there is a link between us. Right. And that that linkage between us will have all our thoughts or our intentions, attentions in there. So which is formed. So when it is formed, um, it may it may be very clean and clear and, and just easy. However, tomorrow, the next week, like if we've known each other for we've known each other for at least 10, 15 years. So throughout the, these years, um, we may not be always on good terms. Maybe sometimes I'm angry with you. Sometimes you're angry with me. So all those energies, though, are still embedded into that energy cord that's between us. So then the energy through time, then, um, it's inevitable that any, any um, energy linkage between two people will get a little, um, I would say, full, but it's, it's, a, it's not clean and clear. So when we use the sword to cut it, it actually releases all those old energy out back into the universe. And when you do that, and next time you, when we talk again, we form a new um, linkage energetically. So that linkage though, because it's new, the, it's it only contains um, like the the intention that we have in that moment, so it's much cleaner. So that's that's something that the sword can do. But then now uh, it would also depend if the other person is doing that too, right? What if you do it, but then uh, like you say, you meet that person again, and how would you know yep. that it's renewed or that person is still in the old? So that old. is. But in your in your energy field, though, you're the one that is responsible for cleaning your part up. Right. Whatever yeah. their their part is, it doesn't matter to you. But then they won't interact the same. That's what I mean. Yeah. And then you have to cut again and then try again. Okay. It's it it's a two-way street. If you are doing your part and they're not doing their part, then there's nothing you can do. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. Because you can have you can have the purest of intention. But if they are not playing at that level, then there's nothing you can do. You can only do your best. You can only do your part. They have to do their part. So that is like it's I'm not saying that this is a magic. This is magic. You can just heal everything or smooth everything over. It's still, um, it's a two-way street with with any interaction. Yeah. And how do you make the sword? You said. Oh, I didn't pay attention that far. Uh, we, we haven't got to that yet. Oh, oh, we haven't. Okay, that's good. So, so first we just um, play with the orb first. Once we yeah. get to the orb, then. Then we can do because um, at first we really have to. I would say have a, a um, relationship with your soul, and to um, build that relationship up. 
so that when you ask the the orb to turn into a boat, you have that confidence that it will just do it. And when you ask the, the orb to turn into a sword, then you can you have that. But it starts with just an orb first. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do now. Wow. Barring any other questions. <clears throat> Okay, folks.